Hey there everyone! Finally, welcome back to Luna Lua Tutorials for Super Mario Bros. X. Today I'm going to be talking about how to mess with enemies. This is another very important thing as you might imagine, so let me set up code real quick. So, enemies. They're probably one of the major things that you want to modify when you're making any level. So. The basic thing you have to learn before modifying enemies is something called a for loop. And it's basically written like this. So for KV and pairs, do and then block the code and then end. So what this basically does is that whatever is in this loop, as it's called, is going to be run on every single entry in a table. And whatever table you want is put in here. The, these two variables, k and v, you can name them whatever you want. I just named them k and v as are the most standard naming thing. k is the current table number of the table entry that it's on. So like if k is equal to 1, that means that the code's current that that code's being run on the first entry in the table and v is the thing that it's actually being run on. So that's basically what a for loop does. There's also um, a few other for loop things that you can do that I'll explain later. So the function that you want to use to make this for loop work with NPCs is NPC get. Uh, without any arguments, this would return every single NPC in the whole level, and we probably don't want that. So the two arguments here are the NPC ID and the section that the NPC is in. Unless you're doing something super specific, you're probably just going, just going to want to put negative one or player section for it to access whatever section you're in, or every single section. Uh, and I here I put in one for the Super Mario Bros. 3 Goomba. Uh, NPCs have variables just like the player, and they work just exactly like the player. They have speed y, so let's just do real quick example code, make v speed y equal to 2. So now the Goombas, they're gonna float up forever into space uh, or touch the ceiling. Um, and like the player, they also have a bunch of memory values. As you can see on this PGE page, some of Beck's NPC offsets. You can do tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of things with this kind of stuff. There's like five AI values that you can mess with. I'll talk about those in a bit. There's just so many different things you can do with NPCs. Uh, so let's do something silly. Just like a player, it's got colliding variables. So let's just make Goombas cause an earthquake when they're touching the ground. Just like the player, you just want to do vmem instead of player mem. It basically works exactly like the player. Is equal to 2 then. Earthquake. So now we're just going to have it so. Now there's an earthquake if the Goomba's touching the ground. You kill him, it stops. It's pretty great. So, NPC AI values. Uh, just click on this to go to the NPC AI page. And this has unique NPC AI values for a, a lot of NPCs. Not all of them, but a lot. So let's mess with... Rinka block. Sure. So we just want to write the for loop again. Remember to put do on there. That's broken my code a couple times for getting to put do on the end. So let's just make the Rinka spawn continuously. So it has one AI value, the spawn timer. So let's just Set, try to set it so that it spawns Rinkas like every frame. So we're just going to check, remove the plus, 
Instead of using field words, you're going to use field defloat. There isn't really anything different about this in terms of writing this kind of code, so don't worry about it. So we want to check. So it says that if the value reaches over 200, then a new Rinka NPC is spawned. Then it is switched back to zero. So ideally, we will want to check if this variable is greater than um, 200. Or, well, it's a bit of a gray area, so I'll just put in 400 just to be safe. And then, if this is true, wait, no, I'm an idiot. Shit, this is going to require a lot of editing. So what we're basically just going to do is that we're just going to set the timer to an absurd amount. But you're going to use field defloat instead of field word. It doesn't really matter for this code. It's just a different type. And so I'm just going to set it to 999 to be sure that it's going to spawn a ring every frame. That it exists. So now just grab a Rinka block. And now you've got a death laser of Rinkas. Isn't it beautiful? It's simply art. It, it's the greatest thing to ever come out of Smebex. So, um, something you probably want to do with Luna Loa is actually spawn NPCs. So, this function. It's aptly called NPC spawn. We'll spawn NPCs. I know it's crazy, right? Um, so let's just do something simple. You don't need to put this code in a for loop. Let's just make the player spawn a Rinka every single time it presses the jump key. So the arguments for NPC spawn. First argument is the NPC ID. Rinka ID is 210. Then the X and the Y value. You can make this any valid X or Y value. I'll spawn it uh, right by the player and a little bit under the player. So 48 would be about a block and a half. And then the section, you just want to probably put this as player section. There are two extra variables, respawn and centered. Basically just dictates if it's going to respawn and if the x values if the NPC is going to spawn centered, which means instead of spawning on the exact x value that you put it as, it's going to be the very middle of the NPC is going to spawn on the x value that you put in. So here it's just going to spawn the NPC. So let's test out this code. It's taking a long time to load. Well, that didn't really work, but... Um, <laughs> you get what I mean. I'll turn on God mode so you can see the code. Oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. I put minus instead of plus. It's very good. That's very good. So, why is Smebex having issues loading today? So now we just got, we can just spawn rink as it will. But let's say you want to do something a bit different. So let's make the rink a spawn at a safe distance above our head. And say you want to spawn the NPC, but with a specific s speed. So we basically just want to do you want to turn it into a variable. So I'll just name the variable A. And then you can type in, let's just make it move upwards slightly. A speed Y equals negative one. So now it's gonna start moving upwards when it spawns. But it gets negated uh, when it starts moving just because of how rink is work. 
So let's try this with a different NPC. Uh, let's just use Goombas. Um... Let's make it be spawned based on what the player's direction is. So let's make a variable called player direction. Make it on loop. And I'm just going to set this to be the player direction memory. You can basically do this because if the player is facing left, it's going to be negative 1. So you can just put in a positive value and then multiply it by player direction. And so if it's facing left, it's going to go left. If if, if player is facing right, it's going to go right. So let's test this out. Works! So now you've got Goombas spawning above your head and I still got one on. Hooray! Although it's kind of a bit tiny of a hobbit does. So let's drastically increase this. You might actually be noticing that it doesn't seem like it's going the correct X speed. And this is because Mavex has a really dumb thing where it will, some NP, most NPCs actually, will override whatever X speed you put for it. Y speed for some reason doesn't get overridden, but uh, some NPCs that work are the NPCs that work are mostly projectiles, like volcano lotus pollen, which I guess let's just use right now, which I believe the NPC ID is two seventy six. Probably want to tone down the speed Y just because it's volcano lotus pollen, make it like an actual threat. So now we're gonna get, yep, we're gonna get Volcano Lotus Pollen. Hooray! So let's do something a bit different. Let's make an NPC spawn a bunch of different NPCs. So let's just do something where Arinka spawns a bunch of different Volcano Lotus projectiles. So I'll just do a quick search for NPC AI. And Rinka. So here we'll see uh, the value that we want is 88 if we want it to spawn as soon as the Rinka moves. So I'll keep the I'll keep the player direction variable. Also, if you don't have any use for a variable, you can just put in blank, and that just means that Luna Lua isn't gonna bother with it. Uh, and typically, you won't really need K. Also, apparently, I forgot how to write code. Now we're just gonna check if the if the timer is greater than or equal to 88, just to prevent like it just barely going over and missing the trigger. So now we're just gonna do something a bit different with for loops. For i equals zero, ten, do. This is basically just going to repeat the code in the loop ten times. You can set it to like nine to make it only run once. Not sure why you would want to do that, but whatever. Uh, NPC spawn 276. So we're just gonna do VX, VY. Let's just make it centered because why not? Even though there's a centered variable. And we're gonna make the That's probably going to be pointless code, but whatever. Let's just 
get a rink a block. And so that code clearly didn't work. Let's modify it really quick to change it to apply to a rink of block. Stupid errors. Now it's going to work, hopefully. Yay! And it's spawning random amounts of volcano lotus pollen just because of the different timers. So there you go! Now it's spawning lots of volcano lo lotus projectiles. So now Rinka spawners just got a whole lot more deadly. That's the slogan for my new company. Indeed. Look at it wiggle. Actually, it looks kind of neat. So that's basically it for the basics on an enemy. Just mess around with stuff if you want to do. There's lots of stuff to be done and stuff. Why did I... There's lots of stuff to mess around with. So thank you for watching. Next time, I'm going to start delving into a couple APIs. Oh, man.